Now the yield of a crop depends on many things. It depends upon the variety of the seeds that we use and for that purpose we also have to consider that there has to be a wider adaptability. You know there are certain natural calamities like floods, like drought conditions, cyclone and so on. We can't deal with them because they are unpredictable. However, if the variety we use is adaptable to a larger number of area or a variety of areas then it becomes easy. The variety also depends upon certain factors and these factors are climatic factors, temperature, soil and the photo period. Now what is photo period? Photo means light and period means time. So a plant not only needs sunlight for photosynthesis that of course goes without saying but in addition to this every plant needs a certain exposure to photo light and unless it gets that light period it cannot go properly. So there are short day plants and there are long day plants and the duration of the time for which a plant is exposed to sunlight is called photo period. So we will write this definition time duration for exposure to sun. So short day and long day plants. So obviously that means there are certain desirable traits for which varieties are evolved. Now what are those desirable traits? The desirable traits are one is of course yield. Yield is calculated to total output per hectare. So you see it is not this just this that so much of grain in a little area but we take a certain unit in which how much grain has been produced is the criteria and obviously this is the most important criteria. Second is quality. For example in the case of wheat it is the baking quality. Just like oil yielding plants it is the fat content they provide that is the quality. So like this whenever we are choosing a variety or when we are choosing our seeds we have to be careful about what kind of quality of seeds will it produce. Third is wider adaptability. The plant should not be only good for a limited climate. It should have a wider adaptability just like the human beings. Human beings also keep on facing all kind of challenges. If we are only used to a very fixed lifestyle, we will not be able to adjust anywhere else. For example, if you are only living in your town and you want to study abroad, if you do not have the capacity to adjust to new surroundings, maybe you will not even survive. But of course we have seen Indians have survived all over the world. What does that mean? They have a wider adaptability. Although they keep their culture alive yet they also imbibe new things and that is the mantra of success. Not only for crops even for us. Next is biotic and abiotic resistance. Biotic naturally means living beings and abiotic non-living. Resistance how much we are able to survive in their attack. I am using the word attack. You see there are so many living organisms that cause diseases. The pests like bacteria, fungi, virus and so on. So the variety has to be disease resistant. The indigenous varieties of India are disease resistant although their yield is little less. So they are preferred for their disease resistance. They are hardy just like us. And abiotic means temperature, soil, the chemistry of soil, all these are abiotic factors. So the variety has to be resistant to these factors. Now in a crop 
it is not only the seeds that are important. In some cases, it is the foliage or the branches that are important, especially in the case of order. So that means we have to also take care of agronomic features. For example, for wheat, we need a dwarf variety. That means a short variety so that the nutrients are not utilized for gaining height but for producing grains. But in the case of order, it is the branches and the leaves that are more important. So there we want the length. Foliage and branches. So the vegetative growth is more important. So depending upon what we are growing, we will also consider the agronomic feature. Lastly, the duration of crop. Obviously, if it is a short duration crop, we will be able to grow more crops. Not only one crop, we can have two, three, which also means economically a better situation. Now, how can we develop these traits? Now, say you have a friend who is very good in science and maths and you are very good in languages. So, what will you do? You will help each other so that both can have command on all the subjects. So, basically what we are always looking for is the best possible combination. As they say, the combo. When you go to uh, eat pizza or any other thing, what they offer these days? A combo. So, that you get everything at appropriate price. So, here also this is a combo effort. For this purpose, what we do is we cross two genetically dissimilar plants and this process is called hybridization. So, its definition is crossing of two genetically dissimilar plants. For example, if the indigenous variety is disease resistant and the exotic variety is dwarf variety, if we will cross them, we, there is a possibility we may be able to combine. We may get a disease resistant variety which gives more yield. So this is what is the effort. For this, first of all, the pollen grains are collected and sprinkled over the other plants so that there is prevention of self pollination. So, the plant in which we are using only the female reproductive organ, the male organ that is the stamens are removed and that is called emasculation. This is only to prevent self pollination. So, we ensure cross pollination between the two dissimilar plants, seeds are produced and then that, that does not mean you get the right seeds. Then you have to do it for some generations and keep on selecting the best possible combinations. And finally, you use it on large scale and this is how the variety is improved. There is one more method. There are some organisms which are called the short form I am telling you GMO which means genetically modified organisms. So, now you know why GMO, G for genetically, M for modified, O for organisms. How do we get that? That means their genetic constitution changes. For this, a new gene is introduced. Like for example, we can use the method of mutation. The seeds are exposed to ultraviolet rays or some special chemicals are used so that there is a change in the genetic constitution and what we get is genetically modified organisms. So, with the help of this, we are able to 
evolve a variety which has all the six desirable traits that we just discussed.